Cosima Severio sat on the terrace of her penthouse apartment in Rome, looking out over the familiar monuments and rooftops of the city as the sun came up. In the distance, she could see St. Peter's Basilica and Vatican City, the dome of the San Carlo al Corso Basilica, and to the north, the Villa Medici and the Borghese Gardens. It was a view she never tired of. It was her favorite time of day before the city sprang to life. It was already warm and would be hot by mid-morning. As she stood at the rail of the balcony a few minutes later, she could see below the Piazza di Spagna, the Spanish Steps, the Fontana della Barcaccia, and the Trinita de Monte Church. The apartment was conveniently located on the top floor of the store, which was her family business. The Severios made the finest leather goods in all of Italy, or all of Europe, rivaled only by Armes which was a worldwide enterprise. Severio leathers were sold only in their two stores, one in Venice, the other in Rome. Like all of her ancestors, Cosima had been born in Venice to an illustrious family that traced its history back to the 15th century. The Palazzo Severio in Venice still belonged to them, although her father had moved the family to Rome shortly after her younger sister, Allegra, was born and Cosima had lived in the same apartment with her parents and brother and sister on the top floor over the store almost all her life. Her younger brother, Luca, had his own villa now, on the Via Appia Antica, and her sister lived in a smaller apartment on the floor below her, with a design studio. It was more convenient for Allegra because it had an elevator, which didn't go to the top floor. Cosima lived in solitary splendor, in the same apartment she had grown up in. She reached the penthouse apartment by a narrow staircase, and the terrace gave her a 360-degree view of the city she considered her home. Venice was their history, but Rome was where she lived and worked and ran the family business she had inherited 15 years before, at 23. As a young girl, it had never been her plan to run the business or even work there. When they were children, her father intended to have her younger brother, Luca, run it one day and step into his shoes. Luca had never shown any interest in it, even as a boy. His friends had been the spoiled, indulged sons of other Italian noblemen, and he had a passion for fast cars and beautiful women at an early age. He didn't have his father's interest in business or his grandfather's talent for creating beauty as a remarkable artisan. Ottavio Saverio had designed each piece for his shop in Venice, whether a saddle or an alligator handbag or an exquisite pair of custom-made shoes. People who were familiar with the finest of everything could recognize a piece created by Severio anywhere.